All right, here we are. Uh, let's talk about surface recombination in, in the depletion region. So this is in the context of surfaces. We're pretty close to the end of the section on recombination and generation. This is really the last topic. And um, let's dive in. So depletion means no free carriers. Okay, so Ns equals zero and uh, Ps equals zero. Okay. Uh, let's plug those numbers in and remember that uh, P1 and N1 are determined uh, by uh, energy levels at the intrinsic level and they're not going to be uh, very tiny, so those are the surviving terms compared to, to N, so we really cross out these terms here. And we can have an expression for uh, N1S and P1S that we had in the past. And we have a recombination rate that has this um, uh, uh, function in the uh, denominator that starts to be looking familiar. We had this in the uh, case for uh, minority carriers. It looked something similar, but here the exponentials have the intrinsic level in it rather than some Fermi levels that we had in the uh, minority carrier recombination. All right, so. Let's compare the, how we got to this windowing function um, uh, to this case here, and maybe we can get to an answer faster than trying to come up with all kinds of approximations. But let's gain some insights in the process. All right, so this windowing function we had had an exponential going to the right and an exponential going to the left as being determined by some Fermi levels here. Okay, so we have the similar exponentials in the case on the uh, on the top here, but we don't have that term one, and these exponentials aren't circled around uh, Fermi functions, but they're circled around the intrinsic level here. Okay, but we can do similar tricks and similar evaluations. So let's assume we again expand this exponential uh, the term in the, in the denominator as exponentials, and we can define some a as the ratio of Ps uh, over Ns. And we have this function f of x. And in the, in the denominator, it has two uh, growing and uh, uh, decaying exponentials. We know that for x equal to 0, that term is 1 plus a. We can redefine the coordinate system to be 0 for x here, where e is ei. This is the transformation. And we know we have these exponentials crossing. And they have a finite value for x equal to 0, but they basically decay to the right and grow exponentially across. OK. Now, let's keep this uh, in our pocket. And remember that we need to integrate, to get the total recombination rate, we need to integrate this over this energy range here where we have all these, these traps available, okay? All right, so let me formulate this integral in terms of my help function f of x. Before I do that, I'm going to assume that these densities of uh, interfaces are constant throughout the gap, all right? That means I can pull this out of the integral, and I'm really just left with 1 over e to the x plus a to the minus x, I'm going to do my coordinate transformation here, so that gives me a, be a beta to the, uh, an inverse beta, and I need to integrate this function now from EC to EV. All right, so let me look at this function in a little bit more detail. I can plot it, right? You can plot it easily now in some graphing calculator or on the web. Uh, basically, it's a sharply spiked function, okay? So this sharply spiked function has a certain width to it, that width is kT, or 1 over beta, which is, again, 25 millielectron volts at room temperature. So 25 millielectron volts is pretty small compared to the total gap, which is 1.1 eV, okay? So, and, or 1,100 millielectron volt, okay? So this very narrow spiky function is narrow and spiky in a wide energy range. That means I can do an uh, approximation. I can replace EV and EC by infinity. 
because it doesn't matter how far away I carry this integral. Really what's important is what's, what's happening here close to EI. All right. Okay, I can actually evaluate that integral pretty easily. Um, the integral is an arc tan. You can do this also as an infinite, uh, indefinite integral, like um, a complete integral with minus infinity plus infinity, and you can find a tabulated value that you might remember from high school math. That's uh, pi over a, uh, 2 square root of a. Okay, that's a pretty cool exercise to do, but we're not going to focus on the math here, but we can now plug these numbers in. So here we are. Uh, we can replace this integral with 2 pi over a. We can pull in the amplitude, and we can pull in the, the coefficient a, like so. And we can pull together the square root, and we get a term that looks like this. So what have we done? We've done a complicated integral and found out that it's really only relevant in a pretty narrow energy range here. And that is done by either pure math or it'll be some insight that you gain that in this process here, in depletion, only traps that are close to the intrinsic level are relevant in a very narrow energy range. Okay? The traps that are sitting out here, mid-gap, are not really relevant in this process. That, that's what the math ultimately says, like this. They're not involved in this process. Okay. All right. So, this term is negative. What does that mean? Well, it means we're really generating carriers. We're whole electrons hop up into the trap state and hop into the conduction band. So this thermally activated process restores equilibrium towards increasing this number of p and n that n times p becomes n i squared. Okay? So this is an equilibrium restoring process. We generate carriers through um, this trap-assisted process. Now let's compare these two cases we've carried through. Case one was minority carrier recombination. We had an expression, and we have this generation and depletion in case number two. Let's squint a little bit, okay? And let's define that basically Cp and Cn are roughly the same, even if they're different by a factor of 10, and multiplied by the density of uh, interface traps and call that A. Coefficient A. All right, and let's squint a little further and write down the minority carry recombination as this A, some delta E, where delta E is this, and the excitations, the carriers that got excited uh, above the equilibrium value. Now, for the generation term, we have something similar. We have some coefficient ballpark A, an energy range, and the excitation level. Okay. Now let's compare uh, these values just broadly. Delta E is EF minus DS at this EF prime, the mirrored uh, uh, EF. Uh, in a gap of silicon of 1.1 EV, let's call this roughly 1 EV or 1,000 electron volts. Now for the generation here, the delta E is a KT ballpark, 25 millilectron volt. So, significantly smaller. Now let's look at some of the carriers. We said we do low-level injection in this uh, minority carry recombination. So low level means it's less than the doping, but larger than the intrinsic value. Okay? So, let's pick 10 to the 16. Over here, it's the intrinsic value. That is the, val uh, that is the carrier concentration that is to be re-established starting from zero. So that's 10 to the 10. Okay, let's uh, compare these rates, 10 to the 8. They're quite significantly different. And that uh, 
gives you some insight as to the intensity of the reestablishment of uh, equilibrium. So here you have energy loss through many states and many carriers on the left. Here you have thermal energy gain through a few states and a few carriers at mid, mid gap. All right. So let me conclude this segment here in a summary. We had derived some expressions um, for uh, trap assisted uh, recombination at the, uh, this is generation at the interface recombination of minority carriers. And here's minority carrier con uh, recombination in bulk. And we also had written this as delta P over tau P. All right, so that really concludes the whole segment on recombination and generation. This is a whole slew of little videos. I hope you uh, learn from these and revisit them in smaller chunks. So thank you very much for your attention.